Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing how you make, keep, find, enjoy friends in the mom life. So stay tuned. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. Hello, I am so glad that you clicked on this video. If you're new here, my name is Dawn Marie and I am the full joy, happy, happy, thank you Jesus for blessing me, the mom of four small kids. Uh, Jackson is currently six, Fiona is four, Eliza is two and Charlotte is Oops, I didn't do that, right? Eliza is three and Charlotte is two. And how do we have friends in the mom life when we can't even remember our kids' ages, yet alone remember a new person's name, get ourselves out to meet somebody, find someone we have stuff in common with, who, you know, it's just like there's so much surrounding friends. And so I haven't perfectly nailed this down, but I'm gonna bring to you today some tips that are practical and ways that I have found to make and enjoy my friendships even as a mom. Well, I know personally for me, uh, the more kids that I had, the harder it became to find genuine friendship because I just felt like I, I can't keep up. As soon as you hit mom life, your friendships evolve. You know, I remember feeling such distance between some friends that were married but didn't yet start to have kids or I felt distance again um, when I, I was on the fourth kid and other friends were maybe on one or two. So what I would recommend and what I found helpful in my mom life is to have one or two close friends that I fellowship with, that I really get to know, that I am constantly going back to and saying, how can I bless them? Let's get to know each other. Let's sharpen each other. Um, instead of you know having all of these distant out there friends or friends through social media. I've got a few people that I'm going to let in to my inner circle of of fellowship. Jesus said the same thing, you know, but there was like the big group of 70, right? Then there's the 12 disciples, but then there was three and it was like the same three that he always brought with him. And so he had close a close circle of three people. And even if you have no friends, you have a friend in Jesus. And I know that's a cliche statement that we say all the time, but I would just encourage you to truly, honestly develop your friendship with Jesus. He wants to be friends with you and he's he he has a personality and what's really amazing is I believe that his personality to every person is different. And so he's one of my favorite or my favorite. He's my favorite person to communicate with because he communicates back to me perfectly no matter whether he's, you know, bringing correction, encouraging me, whatever, like he speaks my language, right? I, I get along perfectly with him. Um, and so everything he does is out of love. Like he's the most loving friend that I have because he is love. So I have, um, led by the Holy Spirit, written down a list and been like, oh wow, I actually have more friends than I think. Um, I just haven't put the effort into developing those friendships. So they're not part of the inner circle because they're still you know, part of the 70 or the 12 because I haven't invested the time in reaching out to them and developing that relationship. Um, or maybe I really am on the market for a new friend. And let me tell you, one of the, fun, the most fun stories that I have about making a friend is one day I recorded a video and it was about, um, reaping a harvest through being obedient to the Holy Spirit and how you have to be obedient to what he speaks in order to, to get what God has, what you've asked God for, you know, like we're asking and then we need to be led because um, if we just sit around all day and we ask and we confess and then the Holy Spirit's like, okay, go do this thing and we don't do it. Well, we're like, you know, there's a blessing on the other end of that obedience. Um, and so I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit, right after I record that video, he's like, tomorrow you need to go to the park. And he tells me the specific park to go to. It's like, you need to go to this park. He specifically tells me the park and you need to do it tomorrow morning. And I'm like, okay, but I have X, Y, and Z going on. And that wasn't really part of the plan. And so I just kind of like forget about it. And I wake up in the morning and he's like, remember this morning you're going to the park. And I'm like, I don't want to go to the park. Like, I really don't want to go to the park. I need to do this and this and this. Like the park does not fit into the schedule. Like he just, again, the Holy Spirit kept speaking to me over and over again. You need to go to the park. You need to go to the park. So I'm like, okay, wow. Like I'm going to the park. And it's so funny because I go to the park a little disgruntled about it. I'm like, I don't want to be here. I've got other stuff to do. So I'm standing up on this play structure. Now, mind you, 
like a few weeks back, I was like, Lord, please bring me a friend um, that I can be equally yoked with who can encourage me and then I can encourage her, right? And uh, so I'm standing up on this play structure and I am working on the, putting out this video because uh, it was a Tuesday and I'm trying to post about it on social media. So I'm that mom that's at the playground on my phone. So I'm literally, I'm so glad this girl didn't judge me because I'm standing on the play structure typing into my phone and she three times had to speak to me before I even realized she was talking to me and not her own kids. She's like, hey, are you here for this homeschool group? And I'm like, what, you're talking to me, huh? No, no, I'm not. I'm like, is there a homeschool group today? Homeschool mom at a park six minutes away from my house and there's a homeschool group of Christian moms coming to the playground. I literally was like, oh, no, I'm not. And it was so funny because I'm standing up on the play structure and the Holy Spirit's like, you need to be friends with her, you need to be friends with her, you need to be friends with her. And I was like, this is so crazy. And when I talked to her about it after the fact, this friend who's so amazing, we've now been friends for, I don't know, like a while, a couple months, six months, a year, something like that. And she's been the biggest blessing ever to me and just like so thankful the Lord brought this friend into my life, right? She literally tells me she's on the ground and the Holy Spirit is like, you need to talk to that girl, you need to talk to that girl. And she said she literally felt like there was a spotlight on me that the Holy Spirit was like, you need to go up to her. So that if I wouldn't have been obedient, then I wouldn't have gotten that friend, but God cares about who we're friends with. And he, you know, it says the, the steps of the righteous man are ordered. And so when we submit our ways to him and we acknowledge him first, he'll direct our path. And it was such an amazing friendship that's so special to me. She has just been such a blessing, encouraged me so much, sharpened me so much. Um, and she came through meeting her randomly at a park because I was obedient to the Holy Spirit and went. You know, I have other friends that have come to different ways, but so when you pray, ask the Lord, Lord, who, you know, when I meet a new mom, I might be like, oh wow, she seems really fun. I really wanna be friends with her. And the Holy Spirit will be like, not right now. Um, I might meet somebody and uh, I'm like, mm, I'm, I'm good. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, you need to love on her and you need to be a friend. The, I might meet somebody and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't, like, I don't really think that'll work out. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, you, that, that I brought that person to you because you need something that they have and they need something that you have. You guys need to sharpen each other. You need to be friends. And when I've been obedient in those relationships, it's been amazing to see what God has been able to produce in me. So this video, I feel like has gotten way longer and way more complicated than I wanted it to be. But the point is that God wants you to have friends. He wants you to be encouraged. He wants you to have people who you allow in to see all the messy moments so that they can come alongside you and lovingly encourage you and build you up and 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 sharpen you. But you can't do that through social media and it's super tricky with lots of kids. So my best advice for you is take account of who you are friends with. Literally write down who you're friends with, who you spend the most time with, pray and ask the Lord, Lord, who do I need to get to know better? And who is someone that maybe that season of being friends is, is, is changing? Um, because sometimes there are people in our lives and we're allowing them to have more influence on us than we realize. Um, and sometimes that influence is good, but sometimes that influence is not really that great. And you know, especially in the mom life, um, it's just like you have to have such a guard over your minds and your thoughts and what you're allowing into you and what people are speaking over and i feel like attitudes are so contagious and so if all your mom friends are frustrated and i'm not talking about having a real moment i'm talking about consistently negative not liking their life not wanting to change not wanting to be different you know just just everything is wrong and awful. I'm not talking about a friend who's going through something. I'm not talking about a friend that's having a season. I'm not talking about abandoning someone when they're trying to be real for a minute. I'm talking about someone that's consistently been in your life, just like trying to, not intentionally maybe, but just like you talk to them and you're drained every time for a prolonged period of time. That might be someone that it's time to start backing away from okay not like call them and you're like we're done you're so negative Shh. no in love you just like the distance starts to happen right and that's okay we um media um one of my favorite apps currently is called marco polo and it gives you the ability to face communicate back and forth but like you know i know that iphone users are really big on their facetime right well that's great Android users have our own skype and whatever you can do that but that requires two people that are 
most of the time, you know, it's a mo two moms with kids to be available at the same time. Like that's craziness. But what's really cool about Marco Polo is that you record the video and your friend can watch it live or they can watch it later and they can respond whenever they want. And so I um, used to use Instagram for that. Before that, I used Snapchat for the same type of thing. Like I, you can't genuinely connect with someone through um, texting. At least I don't think that text is a really good way to communicate feelings, emotions, intentions behind things. Um, and then you end up reading it 5,000 times and spell checking it to perfection and making sure that it all sounds good when you could be so real enough to be like, hey, you might be watching this live and I might say something that I don't completely mean because I'm trying to sort my own brain out, but I'm gonna trust you enough because I've grown this relationship to the level where you get to see me without makeup, you're seeing me in the sweatpants, you're seeing me on the bad days, you're seeing me on the good days, and we're encouraging and sharpening each other. Like, I've got a few people that I'm gonna let in to my inner circle of of fellowship. So I hope that this video encouraged you guys. I hope you can hear me over seagulls and wind and ducks and my na my nature filled backyard. Um, but have real friends. You can do it. Ask the Lord. He doesn't want you to be alone in life. Develop your friendship with him and trust him to bring you amazing people in your life to be friends with. It might not be 5,000. If you're a mom with a bunch of little kids, you might not have 5,000 really fun friends. You might not be going to Painting with a Twist every Friday night. You know, you might you might not be going to all the summer concerts with all of these friends, but have a few really close friends. Start there. Be faithful with the friends that God has given you. Be faithful to be to be a blessing to them. You know, and and then believe God to bring people into your life that you should be friends with. Follow him in your friendships. So I know that in the mom life, it goes way beyond it takes one to no one. Like, you know, if you want to be a friend, find yourself friendly, like it's far beyond that. You can walk in and out of your church building and so, ah, with all your kids that you're like, I don't know anybody's name. I didn't meet anybody. I have no clue what's going on. That's okay. Pick one person that the Lord shows you. Get to know them. Remember their name. Write it down. Seek them out every time. Don't be a weird stalker, right? But slowly, organically, grow your friendship with them to where, wow, over over six months or, or a couple months or whatever it is, I've come to church and I've made sure to try and say hi to that person and there's 5,000 other people around and I'm friendly to everybody, but these are the people that I'm intentionally just little by little plugging away to where now we can we can get down to the the nitty gritty of life together and encourage each other in those moments well i love you guys so much hopefully there was something inside of there that encouraged you and spoke to you you should consider subscribing so that you can get consistent mom motivation to be encouraged in your mom life you can do this you're doing an awesome job just keep going it's only a season and it's a season that god wants to give you his joy in i want you to be a full joy mom i want you to experience the fullness of god i love you guys have a blessed amazing week i will see you for tip tuesday